This video is brought to you by Hagaromo Chalk. Use code TPSA 10% off to get a discount. Hello, my name is Andrew. This is TPSA Ireland's uh, lecture series on real analysis in one and several variables. This series is going to be more, uh, it's going to be less proof orientated than uh, a normal lecture series. It's more just to kind of give you the ideas behind these concepts that you probably haven't seen uh, in your secondary school uh, education. So to start with, we're going to begin with set theory. Uh, in general, we're going to denote sets by uh, uppercase letters, and a set is just any collection of, in our uses, mathematical objects. And the elements of those sets we're going to denote by lowercase letters. This symbol here is an inclusion. So it just means here that any element of A is also an element of B. In a Venn diagram, this is what it would look like. A is just contained in B. Uh, this is the symbol for a union. So this entire set here would just be the set of all elements of A uh, and elements of B. So each member element is either in A or B or both. And this is what its Venn diagram would look like. Here is a set intersection, uh, and it comprises the elements that are in A and B. So it would be this sliver in the middle here. This minus sign here, or this backslash, is used for a set difference. So it's the elements that are in A that are not in B. Now, you can't use the forward slash because in group theory, that means uh, the quotient group. Uh, and that's both of these notations are kind of kept to their separate uh, domains. Um, some professors won't mind, but in general, it's just good to uh, keep them distinct. Now, for some famous results, uh, De Morgan's laws. Here, uh, we can see that they say that A less the union of sets B and C is equal to the intersection of A less B and A less C. Uh, you can do it out on pen and paper, this proof, or you can just draw the Venn diagrams and you'll get a picture like this, no matter if you draw it using the instructions from the left-hand side of the equation or the right-hand side, I find that they're equal. And here it's the same statement, but we're replacing uh, the union with the intersection and here Again, we flip the intersection to a union, and we get a similar picture over here. Now, the image of uh, any set A under the function f, where f maps A to B, is defined as this set here. So it's all the elements in B that are of the form f of x, where x was uh, an element of A. So this can be confusing for some students because uh, they might think that f of a just is b, right, because of this notation here. But that doesn't hold true for all functions. So here we have a set a, and it maps under some function f to this subset of b, uh, f of a. Um, an example of when f of a equals b wouldn't hold would be if a and b were both the real numbers, and x, sorry, f was the function x squared. So it takes any number in, in the real line over here and maps it to x squared in the real line over here. But of course, any number, any real number squared is always going to be positive. So that means that f of a would just be positive numbers, which is not um, equal to the entirety of the real numbers. So properties of images, uh, if we just take f to be any function from sets a to b, and x and y just arbitrary subsets of A, well, we see that uh, the image is preserved, so the inclusions are preserved under uh, images. So if x is a subset of y, that means that f of x is a subset of f of y. Uh, equality holds here for unions, so f of the union is equal to the uh, union of the images. Uh, this does not hold necessarily true for intersections. So the image of the intersections is a subset of the intersection of the images. Now equality holds 
if f was an injective function. And just to remind you that injective means that if f of x is equal to f of y, that means that x and y uh, are the same. Uh, again, now for set differences, f of the, uh, the image of the difference is a superset, right, which is just a subset written the other way, so you can read it this way if you'd like. But it's a superset of the difference of the images. And equality holds again if f was surjective. So to remind you, uh, surjective means that for any element b, in here, b here is the codomain, there exists at least one A uh, in the set A such that f of A equals B. So for any element that we choose here in B, we can find some other function here A that, uh, sorry, some other element here A that maps onto the function to that B. So again, x squared would not be surjective. Uh, in this case, uh, f of a equals b, so the image does equal the codomain. So just some notation before we get on to the next section. Here you'll sometimes see me switching between these two symbols for a subset. Uh, these are almost always just used interchangeably, so one doesn't have the little line underneath and one does. Uh, if we ever want to be very clear that we mean uh, a strict subset, so it's uh, contained within but not equal to, we'll use this symbol. Uh, so it's a subset and we draw a line through the, this part here, which will make it a non-strict um, subset. So, uh, oh, also, sorry, here we have uh, different types of intervals, which we see on the real line. So when we use these two closed brackets, we mean it's uh, intervals closed on both ends, so we use non-strict inequalities. If we're using uh, these open brackets, we mean it's strict uh, inequality on both sides, and you can mix and match the two. So here we have closed and open, and open and closed. So, now on to uh, the pre-image of uh, uh, functions or of uh, sets under functions. Also sometimes called the inverse image but not to be confused with the inverse of a function. This pre-image set is defined for all functions not necessarily ones that are, uh, have an inverse uh, aka bijective functions which are functions that are injective and surjective. So here uh, if we have f mapping a to b and y just some subset of b, the pre-image here uh, of y under f is all the elements in A that get mapped to uh, y under f. So we can just see the picture here, y living in B and the pre-image of y living in A. So all of this is going to get mapped to, uh, into y. An example here on the real line where f maps r to r where this simply just denotes the real numbers. Uh, now here you'll see we're using this arrow without a base and here it's an arrow with a base. All this means is no base, it means set to set, and the base means what happens to the elements of those sets. So here f just is um, mapping x to x squared. So you might see this normally written as f of x equals x squared. So we can look at the pre-image of a, a few different uh, subsets of the real numbers to see what they look like uh, under f. So if we took this uh, open interval here from minus infinity to zero, and the pre-image of that would be all the numbers, uh, all the real numbers, such that x squared uh, lies between negative infinity and zero with strict inequalities. As we said before, there is no real number that satisfies this. So it's just the empty set here, the null set. What about this uh, interval here from 9 to 81? Well, that's all the numbers, real numbers, such that x squared is uh, less than or equal to 81 or greater than or equal to 9. And that is the union of two intervals here, 
minus 9 to minus 3 and 3 to 9. That's because minus 9 squared gives 81. All the numbers uh, up to minus 3 squared uh, will lie between 9 and 81. So like minus 6 will go to 36, that which lies in, it, in this interval. Um, and then again, all positive numbers, which is a little more obvious to see. But because it's x squared, we need to be more careful and remember that it's both sides and we have the union to join them. And then here, uh, if we just took the entire set of the non-negative numbers, its pre-image is actually the real numbers, which you can justify uh, for yourself. Any real number uh, squared is going to give something which lies in here. Okay, so some properties of the pre-image. Uh, if we just take x and y as uh, subsets of b, we can see that the pre-image is a lot easier to work with than the image because, again, subsets are preserved uh, under the image and equality holds under uh, unions, intersections and set differences. A very useful result is here. If we take x to be a subset of a and y to be a subset of b, we can see that, first of all, the pre-image of the image of x is a superset of x, and equality will hold if f is injective. So we can see the picture here. If x lives in a, uh, f will bring it to its image, and we can look back at its pre-image, and that will be some superset of x. So an, an, a counterexample for the equality here, um, if we take f of x again to be x squared, uh, the image of the interval 0 to 2 is 0 to 4, so that's just all the numbers in here squared lie within 0 to 4, and the pre-image of that is minus 2 to 2, because all numbers from minus 2 to 2 when squared lie in uh, 0 to 4. And we can see that this interval here is of course larger than 0 to 2, it's a superset, it, it contains 0 to 2, because x squared is not objective. And here, uh, the pre-image of y, uh, so the image of the pre-image of y is contained within y and equality holds if f is surjective. So now we have some set here, y living in b, we can look back at its pre-image and then the image of that pre-image it will be contained within y. So again, the same counterexample, f of x equals x squared, we have uh, the interval now minus 4 to 4. Its pre-image will be the null set union 0 to 2. So I've just written this for clarity because, of course, the sort of half of this interval, its pre-image will be the null set because from uh, minus 4 uh, up to 0, none of those numbers uh, are any real number squared. But then 0 to 2 uh, are. So uh, that's why I've written this this way. But we can just drop this null set and just get 0 to 2. And the image of 0 to 2 under x squared is as we've seen before 0 to 4, which is of course contained within this interval uh, minus 4 to 4 because. Um, x squared is also not a surjective function.